The flood had almost infected the entire crew of the Spirit of Fire, Dead Space style. And Jerome, the Spartan of Red Team as well, he had been surrounded and almost consumed by the parasite, then saved in a way that almost killed him as well. So today's gonna be some fun Halo lore, let's go ahead and get into it. So of course, yes, this story is lore, and it's from Tales of Slipspace, which is a multi-comic, and it's actually only $12 right now on Dark Horse, which includes several stories, and this is just one of them. Link down below for that. So, the first Halo Wars game took place in 2531. That's almost 20 years before Halo Combat Evolved story took place, and the crew would awaken 28 years later after being in space in 2559 near the Ark to face the banished threat, as seen in the sequel. That's about six months after Halo 5's story. However, long before the sequel, the Spirit of Fire was zipping through space aimlessly without a slip space drive hoping to reach UNSC forces, to be rescued by anybody. In Halo Wars 1, the Covenant intended to incorporate these deadly foreigner warships into their existing armada to crush humanity with extreme ease. In order to stop this from happening, the Spirit of Fire had to sacrifice its slip space drive to essentially use it to send the sun in the middle of the shield world into a supernova, causing all the warships, including the Covenant in the shield world, to be destroyed and ultimately save humanity. John Forge decided to stay behind and detonate it manually, and as their plan was successful, the Spirit of Fire launched itself out of the world and escaped the implosion. Now basically being lost without the ability to call for help or slip space to UNSC forces, they would be forced to head out to UNSC space at a very slower pace than slip space. But the crew had no idea, believing that the battle was over, a stowaway had come aboard. A single flood infection form had somehow snuck on during all the action in Halo Wars 1, and as you know, a single form, even though it's just one small form, can take down an entire civilization if done right. This form would be lurking on the ship for six years in isolated space until one day it saw its chance to begin infection. During this long space voyage, crew members in cryo would be awakened once in a while to perform scheduled maintenance. Makes sense, right? They gotta make sure everything's running right. Otherwise, the ship was pretty quiet at all times and may have seemed abandoned by a bypasser. On the day of January 1st, 2537, about six years after Halo Wars 1, Engineer Specialist Maldina was awakened by Serena, the ship's AI, before, of course, she deactivated herself to perform scheduled maintenance. So Maldina would wake up, casually make some coffee, and begin inspection of life support, FTL drives, engines, fuel supply, and everything looked pretty good. Until suddenly, a flood form leaped out of the darkness and immediately infected the engineer in seconds. Now, as you can imagine, this is an extremely alarming situation. It gets a lot worse, but even right now, it's bad. The crew is lost at space, no contact with the UNSC or any others, and this is basically a dead space type of situation, and could go south very quickly. Serena immediately noticed something was wrong in her room with Maldina, and noticed right away that Maldina had been infected by the flood. Now this was surprising because during the encounter with the operation on the shield world to rescue Professor Anders, the crew believed that they had killed them all, but somehow, some way, one of them managed to come on board and hid away somehow. Serena would access the threat and decided that it wasn't an alarming situation. It was. But she saw that this form was locked behind a locked sector of the ship, so it looked like a contained situation, and it looked like it was best to analyze the threat before destroying it. Now, you may think that it's odd that an advanced AI 500 years in the future would not immediately see the extremely dangerous threat of this situation and find any possibility to immediately eradicate it and not just watch it and observe it and study it for future reference. But remember how I said it's been six years? Yeah. AIs created by humanity, the smart AIs, they only have seven year lifespans. And coming up to that date, that seven year anniversary, they begin to go a little bit crazy. And Serena's seventh birthday, her anniversary, if you will, was only three days from deactivation. So she's already begun her early stages of rampancy, such as losing focus or forgetting important things and seeing how this was not an extremely alarming situation to begin with. She observed this form that was once before Maldina as it began to attack random objects, screens, busting through walls, acting kind of erratic, and noticed that the flood form wasn't suffering, but it was very hungry. It had taken about four days, but eventually by January 4th, the form 
burst into smaller form, causing the problem to grow. And then Serena finally realized that she needed to deal with this, that it was a real threat. Serena would wake up Anders first, and then they would both realize that the flood form had somehow pulled the knowledge from the engineer Madina's mind to begin accessing cryos around the ship and begin infecting crew members. So if you don't know flood forms, when they infect you, they actually can get every, all your memories, all your knowledge, and all your experiences and what you know about life and things, basically. Making the flood even more dangerous than just a typical zombie kind of infection. Drome, the Spartan 2 of Red Team, would soon after this event started, would be awakened, having requested he would be awakened if Anders would wake up, which happened very recently. Suddenly, an infection form would leap up and attack Jerome, landing right near his helmet, where, by the way, Spartans are very vulnerable. In fact, Master Chief had almost been affected this way at the end of Halo 1, as read in the books, but was saved by Cortana. The form was quickly killed as Jerome slammed it down to the ground, and you would soon find out about 30 infections have already occurred on the ship and growing. Real quick break, this video is supported by Audible. Don't miss out on Audible's offer for all Halo followers to get a free Halo audiobook or any of your choice. Quick sign up, link down in the description. Anders, understandably, begins panicking as she discovered that Jerome was basically trapped in the room with these forms. Jerome fights off these advancing flood infections and Anders wants to give him a way out, but Serena has activated quarantine at this point, which even Spartans can't override. Serena informs that Jerome that the Flood use a collective memory and may be using codes to override lockdown procedures. Now about 33 forms around the ship, with some of them knowing how to break through quarantine by using the minds of the victims. Jerome begins using grenades to take them out. A drastic measure, but it's a drastic situation. Jerome was making good work of cutting down these flood forms with only a dozen or so left, and as he continues, only about four. What's funny about this whole thing is that this whole time that Jerome is using these grenades, which as you can imagine near cryos is super dangerous um, because they don't protect you from you know explosions and flying pieces of metal. Uh, Serena keeps getting mad at him about the using these grenades and I just find it really funny. <laughs> How does he have these many grenades? Anywho, he keeps doing it and Jerome finishes him off or so he thinks. One last form, funny enough, the original infection form when it had given birth to the smaller forms, it had survived that and it had used the codes and had escaped Jerome's slaughtering. Marina's form raced through the drop pod hangar to another cryo to infect more and Jerome suddenly became overwhelmed with flood forms. He had chased her down and then got caught up and almost and died and almost infected here and Serena opened the airlock, sucking everything out into the cold barrenness of space, including the Spartan. He tore off the flood spore as he was flying and then grabbed onto the side of the ship, almost lost to space. I mean, keep in mind if he was, if he flew off, he probably would have been lost for good. So now with the flood threat taken care of, Jerome and Anders would go back to the cryo and, well, nap for 22 years more. But before that happened, Serena would begin terminating herself with the assistance of Professor Anders. She would then make a secret report only for Cutter and Anders to access when they would wake up, in which she would record the message to Captain Cutter, and he would wake up to that message that she made well, by the beginning of Halo Wars 2, that happened 22 years prior. She actually refers to this incident, but it's super easy to miss if you didn't know about this whole thing in this comic here. Take a look. Wake up. Something has happened. The spirit of fire is in a situation I could not anticipate. I'm certain Professor Anders would enjoy that level of admission. So let's keep it between us, shall we? We've been adrift for just over 28 years. I've made quite a few repairs while you were sleeping. So ship systems are 100%. Remember to check out Audible's offer linked down in the description and get a free Halo audiobook and learn more about Halo lore or get any ebook of your choice. There's millions of books to choose from. So guys, if you had fun watching this video, drop this video a like and share it around to your friends. And if you want more Halo content, be sure to subscribe. Don't miss future videos. Hit that notifications bell. Be alerted right when a new video comes out. And guys, let me know, did you learn anything new here? What did you like most about today's video? And do you want more behind the scene type videos with the flood like today's video let me know down in the comment section below i'd love to hear your thoughts i'll see you guys soon peace